Okay. We left off yesterday with um, Kena kind of being stuck with the problem in that she doesn't know how to, how is she going to write in her journal when she supposedly lost her journal? Um, and Miss Campbell thinks that it's gone forever. So, and then Tiffany will know that Eric gave the journal back to her. So let's see how she solves this problem. 8.30 p.m. Since I didn't have my journal tonight, I was going to sit in bed and write my speech. Oh, hold on just a quick second, guys. I need to fix something. There we go. Okay. Um, I was going to sit in bed and write my speech, but I was having a hard time getting comfortable. I tried to think of a more comfortable place to sit and write, and I decided that it would be more comfortable to sit in my beanbag chair again. It kind of reminds me of like, I'm looking at the pictures and I'm seeing Ellie's um, beanbag chair right there, and I'm thinking that would be very comfortable. When I went to his room, he said, oh boy, it's you again. Then he said, what are you going to start, what? Are you going to start coming in here every night? Okay, I said. I was happy that he invited me to start visiting every night. I walked right over to the beanbag chair and sat down. Thumbs up if you think that Brian was really inviting her every night, or was he being a little sarcastic? Yeah, I don't think he was really inviting her every night either. What's that notebook? Brian wanted to know. It's my journal for right now, I told him. I had some problems with my other one. I like that notebook much better, Brian said. It doesn't look so girly. When Brian says stuff like that, most of the time I stick my tongue out at him. But I thought if I stuck my tongue out, he might ask me to leave his room. Instead, I asked him if he had gotten a good behavior report that day. Brian rolled his eyes. But then he said yes, and he said, it's kind of annoying that you want to check up on my behavior all the time, but I guess you are just trying to be a good kid. Then all of a sudden, I just started crying. I'm not a good kid, I told Brian. I'm a bad kid. I told him I wrote all kinds of bad stuff in my journal. I even wrote bad stuff about my very best friend. Brian laughed at me. I told him it was not nice to laugh at a crying little sister who said, it doesn't make you a bad kid just because you wrote some stuff in your journal that wasn't nice. You can write what you want in your journal. But everybody might find out the bad stuff I wrote, I said. I told him all about Tiffany and how Eric got my journal back, but that Tiffany still knew all the bad stuff I wrote. I told him about Bippo and Pecky and how I had to give a speech in front of the whole second grade. I said that Linny would be sad if I wrote my speech about how great Tiffany is. But Tiffany said, I had to write about her. So what? You're going to let Tiffany boss you around for the rest of your life? Brian asked. Hmm. I don't know, I told him. I guess so. Maybe I should move to Maryland too. But I would miss mommy. But if you move to Maryland and I stay here, I will miss you, I said. And I started to cry again. I'm not moving to Maryland, dummy, Brian said. Dad has to travel too much for work, and there would be no one to stay with me. I just said that because I was mad. Oh, I said. I felt about a million times better in about two seconds. Plus, I have to stay here to make sure you don't do dumb stuff like let Tiffany Harris boss you around, Brian said. Just let her say what she wants to say and don't worry about it. That's pretty sad that she thinks she has to force people to play with her. Even though she's mean, it's sad no one likes her. I guess, I said, but I would like her if she would just be nice. I can't like her if she is mean all the time. And I can't like her if she just wants to play princesses all the time and won't let anyone else pick the games. And I can't like her if she tells all my private stuff. If she tells what I wrote, all my friends will be mad at me. Even if she tells what you wrote, your friends won't be mad for very long, Brian told me. Your friends are pretty cool. And plus, little kids don't have very good memories. We do too, I said. I, can't, I can remember almost every time someone has made me mad since kindergarten. I can't really remember from preschool, though. 
Do you really think my friends are cool? I said with lots of surprise. Yeah, they're okay, Brian said. I couldn't believe it. Am I cool? I wanted to know. You're cool if you don't let Tiffany Harris tell you what to do, Brian said. Just say whatever you want to say in your speech. And if she tries to tell you what to say, what to do, just say, it's a free country. And here they are um, in his room and they're having their conversation and they're chatting about it. It's a free country, I said. That's true. Then Brian asked me if I would be quiet so he could read. I turned to the back of my notebook and started writing my speech. Okay. I want to finish it. Thumbs up if you want me to finish it. Okay, here we go. Friday, November 13th, 3.30 p.m. Today was the greatest day of my life. I met a famous writer. I, people clapped for my speech and I find out Tiffany Harris is a liar. And mom let me drink two cups of punch even though it is loaded with sugar. First, I met a famous writer, Bob Morgan. He has written 10 books. Five books are about Bippo and Pecky. He answered lots of questions from the second grade kids, and he even answered some questions from the parents. Mom was there with her video camera, but she didn't ask any questions. I wrote down Bob Morgan's answers to the questions in the back of my notebook, so I wouldn't forget what he said. Next, I gave my speech. Five kids gave speeches, but mine was the longest. I got a little nervous about making a speech in front of kids and grownups and a famous guy but I gave my speech in a loud voice anyway because I would not have been cool if I had gotten scared and run away or something. I did not look at Tiffany for my whole speech because I knew she was not going to like it. My speech was about how I am very lucky to have three best friends. I said I have a best friend in my class named Lenny, a best friend in my building named Eric, and a best friend in my family named Brian. Then after I talked about my three best friends, I told a fable that I made up. <clears throat> it was about Bippo and Pecky, and I also made up this other hippo at the zoo named Skippo. I named him Skippo because I know Bob Morgan really likes hippos named names that rhyme, and I wanted him to like my fable. So anyway, Skippo is mean to the other hippos, and Bippo tries to teach him to be nice. I. After I said the moral of my fable, I said, the end. People started clapping, so I bowed. The Miss Campbell told me, good job, and I can take my seat now. I'm going to pause, and I'm going to show you the picture here, um, because she's giving her speech, and this is her bow, I think. There's somebody recording. After all the speeches, we had a little party with fruit punch and cake. Addie's mom made the cake and Addie used icing to make Bi Bippo and, and Pecky on the cake. Then at the bottom, she wrote, thank you, Bob Morgan, but she ran out of space. So the thank you part was real, was extra big. Bob was a little smaller and Morgan was all jammed up so you couldn't really read it. But I told Addie it looked really good because I know it is hard writing on cakes. I was having a really fun time at the party because lots of people were telling me they thought my speech was very, very good. And Lenny gave me a hug and said I was nice. She said she liked the part of my speech where I said that even though Lenny and I have disagreements sometimes, it's okay because we are still really good friends. I was standing beside Lenny and eating my cake when Tiffany came over to me. She looked mad. She said, I'm going to tell Lenny what you wrote about her in your journal. What are you talking about, Lenny asked Tiffany. Kina wrote something mean about you in her journal, Tiffany said. I felt very brave after I gave my speech, and Lenny said that, yes, even though we had disagreements, we were still friends. I don't care what you say, I told Tiffany. It's a free country. You can say, every, you can say everything you read in my journal. I don't even care. You read Kina's journal? Lenny sounded very shocked. 
I decided to just let Linny, to just tell Linny what I wrote before Tiffany could tell her. I wrote that I could, I didn't believe you stayed up all night at your sleepover. I said, I think I wrote it because I was very sad that my dad didn't let me go to the sleepover. I'm sorry. Linny moved her shoulders up and down in the same way that Tiffany does to act like she knows everything. Except when Linny did it, I didn't mind because I knew it meant that she wasn't mad at me. I felt about 2 million times better in one second. Just then, Tiffany's mom walked over and said she thought I was a good little speaker and that I should always remember to stand up nice and straight when giving a speech. Okay, so here we have the picture of the three of them talking and Lenny kind of shrugging her shoulders like, okay. Or actually it looks like it's, um, it looks like Kina who's doing that. It's definitely Kina who's doing that. Tiffany read Kina's journal, Lenny said to Mrs. Harris. You should tell her not to read someone's private stuff. Mrs. Harris looked surprised that Tiffany said that to her. Tiffany certainly did not, she said. I took that journal away from Tiffany as soon as I saw that Kina left it because Tiffany needed to do her extra workbook pages. Tiffany is learning to do third grade math. Then Mrs. Harris turned to me. I'm not sure where I put your diary, but I'll try to remember to look for it. That's okay, I said, I got a new one. Mrs. Harris walked away to go talk to Miss Campbell. I looked at Tiffany. She didn't look too happy. You lied. Linny said to her, I played airplane princess twins for no reason. I said, why did you lie? Tiffany said she didn't know and she moved her shoulders up and down. It's not nice to lie, Linny told her. Then she asked Tiffany if third grade math was hard. Tiffany said it wasn't hard, but that she didn't like it. Then she just talked to us normally for a few minutes. She didn't say she was sorry about lying, but she didn't say anything else mean. So after Tiffany left, Lenny and I decided that we will ask Tiffany to play with us at recess next week, as long as we can play just regular games and not the prince's kind. Saturday, November 20th, 11 a.m. I am at dad's. I decided to just go ahead and finish writing in this plain old notebook since I'm almost done with it. This morning when dad came to pick up Brian and me, mom showed dad Brian's chart that had three stickers on it already. Dad said, wow, what a beautiful chart. Did you that, buy that from a professional chart maker? It must have been very expensive. And I told Dad that I was the one who made the chart. Brian only has to get two more stickers. I think he can do it. But if not, I will make him another chart for the next week. Before we left with Dad, Mom made everyone watch the video of my speech. Mom, Brian, and I sat on the couch, and Dad sat in this old rocking chair from Grandma Hapos. When I started talking about Brian, all of a sudden you can hear the sniffing sound on the video, but you could still hear me talking because I talked loud. This is uh, them sitting down, listening and watching the video. I wonder what the sniffing sound is. I wonder if we're gonna find out. Then when the video was over, Brian said my speech was pretty good. Dad said he thought I was fantastic. Everyone asked me questions about the part of my speech, speech that was about Eric. Mom said the sniffing sound was from her crying because she was proud of Brian and me for being nice people, even if Brian was trying to be crazy with all his clowning. Uh, then Brian said mom's crying sounded like a horse breathing. And mom said, Brian better watch out. And um, here's her speech, Friendship, a speech by Kena Ford, dedicated to Bob Morgan. Hello, my name is Kina Ford. I'm going to give you a speech that has two parts. The first part is about my, best fr my three best friends. The second part is going to be a fable. I have three best friends. One, is my, one of my best friends is named Eric. Eric lives in my building and he goes to this school, except he is in the boy class. Eric and I have been best friends since we were four years old. Eric and I do a lot of projects. One of our projects was making a homework cut out of a big refrigerator box. When I have a problem, Eric tries to help me fix it. He helped me a few weeks ago when I caught off my hair by accident. Oh, we read that book, remember? We tried to make a yarn braid to go where my real braid used to. And this week he helped me with another problem. The way we fixed the problem might have been against the law, so I won't say what it was. But I will just say thank you, Eric. 
My next best friend is Lenny. Lenny is in my class. I like Lenny because we play fun games together. I also like her now because now that we're in second grade, she doesn't get mad about little stuff anymore. So if someone tries to make her mad, she just says, so what? And whatever, and stuff like that. I like Lenny because we can have disagreements, but then we can still be friends. My other best friend is my big brother, Brian. He is the best big brother in the whole world. He lets me come in his room when he's not busy and he talks to me about my problems. Sometimes he says mean stuff to tease me, but when I feel sad, he tries to make me feel better. I am so happy that I have a big brother. I am so happy that I have a big brother and I'm happy he is not moving to Maryland. He has a bing bag chair. Now it's time for the fable. This fable is called Skippo is not nice to Bippo and Pecky. Once upon a time, two best friends named Bippo and Pecky were at the zoo. They were the same Bip Bippo and Pecky from Bob Morgan's book. So I hope it's okay that I use them at my fable. Anyway, Bippo was mad because this mean hippo named Skippo knew a secret about Bippo. And Skippo said he would tell Bippo's secret to everybody if Bippo didn't do everything Skippo said. Skippo wanted Bippo to play with him all the time instead of playing with Pecky. Then Pecky got sad. So Bippo told Skippo, you are not the boss of me. Skippo started to tell Bippo's secret, but Bippo sat on him so that no one could hear what Skippo had to say. And you didn't know this at the beginning, but Bippo was a lot bigger than Skippo, and that's why he could sit on him. The moral of the fable is that you, if you want to be someone's friend, you should just be nice. Now you learned a lesson and you learned that about my three best friends. I love you, Bob. The end. Okay. So, um, what do you guys think about the um, her fable? I'm going to mute you and then you can raise your hand and we can talk about her fable. What do you think about her fable? What do you think it's a reflection of? Maddie. It's a reflection of what happened to her. Okay. Like, it's very because, it is, but she, it's like, um, what happened is, um, he said, like, Bippo was gonna, like, uh, I keep getting mixed up with Bippo and Skippo. Uh huh. So, Skippo was, um, and was Tiffany, and, like, Skippo was, I think, uh, and, and Skippo was Bippo. Kina, and Pecky was, like, her, was Kina's friend. Lenny? Yeah. Lenny. Okay, how many of you agree with that? That it was representative of what was happening in her life. Yeah. Um, 